Right, hi guys, um, back again. So this is just a comparison of the images that we we took, and starting off with the Canon One uh, DX Mark II's shot. Um, both cameras did miss a few shots. Um, they did decide to focus elsewhere. Um, it was a little bit breezy, so the the Phantom was moving around a little bit. Um, but also, we were trying to focus on this writing here, just there. So it was actually, as it was coming towards us, obviously you have to move up and down uh, slightly. So it was actually down to human error, I'd imagine, more than um, the actual camera itself, if it sort of missed a little bit. So, know what cameras are like. If they hit a bit of white, it may have missed, it may have hunted a little bit just in between shots. So, it, you know, um, I don't think it was down to the camera so much. I do think it was uh, me trying to keep it on target. If I moved off slightly, it would have would have hesitated so you know as a as a shot this is straight out of the cannon um, beautiful shallow depth of field behind um, if I bring in a um, RX10 shot similar sort of size this one here I think it actually missed missed focus slightly actually oh, no, it's not too bad there you go um, but as you can see, if we put them side by side, the color ignore the colors. Um, that's down to different angles, different shutter speeds, I think, and down to timing where the sun was in and out. So um, there's many factors there that could actually be affecting that. So I think it's actually mainly the sunshine that obviously come back out because um, it was behind the clouds and popping in and out all the time. So other than that, the the difference I'd say um, there you can see that yeah. So barring the colour difference, I wonder if actually if I um, can see what happens if I put auto colour, it's warmed up very slightly. Um, but so from the RX10, which is on the right hand side, and the uh, the Canon uh, 1DX Mark II. In theory, there's not a lot in it. Colours, I mean, we can change the colour anyway. But if you look at the bokeh in the background, so much more soft and sort of blended in beautifully on the on the left-hand side. And that is the, basically the difference between the the sensor size, um, allowing it to you know create that, that effect. Um, another def the the other benefit, the real benefit of actually of having the smaller lens and the smaller sensor. Is you're more likely to get a bit more in focus. So if we look at the the propellers, for example, you'll notice that on uh, on the uh, Canon on Gavin's uh, camera, the front end is pretty sharp. But look how sh how um, soft and out focused the uh, the rear propeller is. But then look at the RX10; it's much more in much more in focus. So it just shows you the depth. The depth difference uh, in each image is is very different, um, but both of them, I mean, both of them got pretty much tack sharp images. I mean, the the, um, the Phantom wasn't flying at a ridiculous speed towards the cameras, um, but it's still a moving target in okay light. It wasn't a particularly bright day, and the sun was going, and we, we were behind the trees, so there wasn't a huge amount of light hitting the actual um, the Phantom itself. Um, but you can see the slight difference. Um, Gavin's looks a bit warmer, and I do think that was just happens to be the sun was out. I don't think there's any difference otherwise. Um, noise control. Getting into so if I go uh, view 100%, and go Gav's one view 100%. The DSLR is definitely a cleaner image. Definitely a cleaner image, um, but it's a fifteen thousand pound camera in with the lens attached to it. Big difference compared to eighteen hundred, and a little bit of touching up, and maybe a little bit of um, noise control. I don't think there'd be much in it, but actually, when you, if you notice, actually the the more as as we've zoomed in here, how how nice the actual bokeh on the. Um, on the RX10 actually looks looks pretty good. 
it's not a lot in it really, it's only when you zoom out it becomes a bit more noticeable but actually it's you know um, so that's that's those two shots we did, I know for a fact that we did miss um, we didn't count how many shots we got in focus and out of focus, all we know is we got a good amount in and nice and sharp and there's a good few missing but I, like I said before I do think that was just a camera doesn't like white you know if you if you aim your camera at a studio wall that's bright white what can it focus on nothing so all we had to do was stray up in this area here and that area there just very slightly and I think the camera would have just gone because we have both both cameras were on spot focus so all we had to do was just move up up very slightly and I think it, it would have struggled to even you know to find a, uh, a focus focus uh, point as such um, so that's those two Let's get rid of those. Um, next image. Um, so we we took there was quite a bit of bird birds flying around. So we had a, um, a jackdaw, and this has been cropped in already. Let's just uh, take the original image. Which I think is that one. There we go. So we're good. I mean, we're probably a hundred and hundred and fifty feet away. Maybe maybe more. Maybe two two hundred feet away. Um, so that's that's on the from the RX10. Let's put it over there for a minute. And uh, this is the kind of version. This is a. I mean, obviously, this is a real-world test. Both um, both shots have been just opened and uh, and saved. So if we go to 100% again. And uh, you should be able to see the difference. There you go. The settings themselves are are different. We 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 hadn't actually matched any any shutter speeds or anything on this on these ones. Um, so it was a case of. Um, there we go. So it's a again it's a much cleaner image. But then if my shutter speeds are different, um, and I've actually got a bit more detail in the actual feathers and everything like that but let's see if I can see what happens if I go auto levels that's made the sky blue <laughs> um, let's see what we can uh, so the levels uh, that's just uh, yeah we're going to change much are we without losing too much detail so definitely, definitely a difference in the uh, the quality um, from the Canon there. Um, but like Gav said, there's not a lot in it. Um, I mean, if we matched our settings, it may have been a different situation. It might have been very similar. Um, but you can again, you can see the difference between depth of field on the Canon here. Very, very soft brickwork, where on the RX10 here on the right hand side the brickwork is lovely and sharp depends on what you want really um, I actually quite like the sharpness of the bricks but I, quite, I find bricks very interesting so the sort of the reds and things like that and the, the mortar and everything I always think this looks quite interesting in photos um, this is lack of light on this jack door on the one of um, on, on the, uh, the, Canon, the Canon camera um, where there is a little bit more light on the on the wall, on the sorry, on the roof tiles here. So I don't know what the light difference was. I know the jack door on this one was um, was different. But I have noticed one thing: the shadows are very different. Was that? Oh, no, it's a tree. So it's right. Um, so they also the shallow depth of field up front and shallow depth of field up the back with the cannon absolutely you know very very similar shots as such you can see it in the um, you can see it in the TV aerial here very almost gone which is actually really makes it very easy for you to just rub that out without any problems with this one it's not too bad but you know it could cause you a few you know you might see a few shapes and stuff appearing if you if you do a bad edit on it um, but still you can't really complain um, you know it's the difference between being out with a camera or a camera should I say and as we were talking about earlier, you're not going to carry the 
one DX Mark II and the the four hundred uh, sorry the six hundred millimeter f four um, lens around you know seven kilos plus um, plus a tripod as well um, where you can just turn on uh, turn on the uh, the RX ten take it you know and and get the shot very quickly without even a tripod or anything. Um, I think that's the main the main thing here. I mean, if we were, if we were to take away the cannon shot, and I was to leave that there and open it again, no one would be the wiser if there's any difference. They'd probably think it was an amazing shot. Um, so you know, it's, it, if you've got nothing to compare it against, what's the better shot? It's a bit like the person you know, if if um, if a tree falls down in the in the forest and no one's there, did it actually happen? It's a kind of a similar sort of situation, isn't it? Because um, now we're looking at this image, and to you, does it look bad? It's a little bit grainy and a little bit noisy there, but very slightly. I don't think there's any, uh, you know, there's no real sort of negative about it too much. You know, like we say, the shallow, the depth of field shallowness is is, you know, it's obvious. You can see the difference. Um, between the the bigger lenses and the bigger bigger sensors, um, but uh, yeah, so that's that's that one. That's a bit different. So we got the pigeon that was sat on the um, we got here. So the, the, we'll start off with this one. So there's the pigeon sat on top of the chimney, same chimney as the the jackdaw was on. Um, so we've got here. Okay, so that shot there you're looking at is from the RX10 Mark IV. This shot is from the uh, Canon 1DX Mark II. I'm just going to click auto levels and see what happens with this. It's quite a bit brighter, but it's more the fact that you can see the difference in noise quality. There's hardly any there, even once I've um, overexposed the image slightly. So I'll go back again. So you can see the quality of the image there is actually, you know, it's it's, it's lovely at the end of the day. It's um, very slight, very slight. Let me go back to um, the RX10. That is actually pretty good. I'm quite impressed. You can see a bit more pixelation in the sky. But the actual pigeon itself. We go into that. You actually look. Space limits really. Um, there you go. So detail. I can see a few more feathers here, just very slightly on the cannon compared to the Sony. But like I said before, the, the, unless you're pixel, unless you're pixel um, hunting, you know, if you're actually zoomed in 100% plus all the time, you're never going to notice it anyway. Uh, what else did we do? We did. Oh, the starling. So I quite like this shot. This is a uh, this is Gav's one. Um, it's actually really lovely. I think with all the depth, the, the blur, you know the um, the shallow depth of field through the tree branches, and everything he was shooting through, um, and the starling just sat there, and a the little bit of the sunlight that was left, um, sort of shining on the leaves and everything, it actually looks really sort of autumn-like, and actually works quite well. But the um, the starling looks the starling itself looks pretty probably no, I can't speak. The starling itself looks proper evil. With its little red eye and its you know little messy beard. Um, so if we go auto levels and see what that does. So basically, it's brought up everything, um, which depending on what you like, it's brought the sky a little bit more. I think. Um, yeah. So it's basically sorted it a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna leave it like that because that should show up a little bit more detail. So that's that one, and then I've got one somewhere. There it is. Go. So different way, different lighting completely. I think the sun. I did take it about a minute or so later, so the lighting might be slightly different. And actually, even on auto levels, though, it didn't change it all that much. Um, but this is straight out of the camera. Um, so having a look at that versus the RX10. So we're zooming on the rarity there. Um, let's come over this way. About the same size. I tell you what, the Sony seems to. I mean, we're both we're both shooting in in RAW. 
and we're both shooting in manual so it's down to the humans itself to decide what's good obviously Gav's looking through a, a an optical viewfinder and adjusting the the um, exposure from what he's 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 looking at um, with his, uh, the light meter and everything on the camera I'm shooting through an OLED screen or viewfinder um, which has given me a, a live a live view version of what the exposure is when I change my shutter speed and aperture and everything so basically what I see is what I get but you know how accurate is that in real terms you know um, there's more detail in the bird on my shot with the RX10 you can see a bit more of the feathers and everything but I actually really like the shadow and the harshness of the contrast difference between the, the colours in the in the um, starling on Gav's shot um, it's the same bird as well so you know the difference in they're, they're completely mirrored obviously because they're looking the other it's looking the other way oh. go, 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 go. I have to cut that a bit um, so the difference between light and dark as such is the Sony seems to have overexposed slightly even though the sky looks very similar it does look very similar there's a bit more blue down below but actually up top it's not a lot in it um, I was shooting at a completely different angle I was probably shooting at 30 degrees difference to where Gav was shooting I'd imagine because I was shooting from a completely different angle um, but yeah no, it does. I mean, both look good. Like I say, if you get rid of one or both, and then as as an image, if you look at that as an image, you think that looks really nice. You bring that one out. You look at that an image, you think, yeah, it looks really nice. So, which is right and which is wrong? I don't think there's anything in it. If I was to adjust the contrast in the um, Sony one bring up the contrast a little bit and drop the brightness it suddenly looks a bit similar doesn't it definitely in fact the cannon's picked up a fly there it's flying around so the fact that I've actually bought the the contrast up a little bit to bring the shadows back out and everything, it looks it does look starts to look a bit more similar. There's definitely a bit more blue going on in the uh, in in the cannon shot on the left hand side from the sky. So that could be the angle he was shooting at, and it may have been a bit more hazy around to the right hand side. But I, you know, it might just be more the just the exposure itself. Um, but yeah, just it's an interesting comparison. I definitely think the cannon's slightly sharper. Um, but then you'd hope so, really, wouldn't you, for a, for a ten thousand pound lens compared to an eighteen hundred quid camera with with that lens built in? Um, but you know, as a comparison and a, and a usable tool, I do think there's not a lot lot in, in it for the difference of value of money. So they both win hands down. You know, the the Canon's absolutely a monster. And, and brilliant for sports and, and all that sort of stuff um, and you know like the motor racing and, and wildlife and things like that and obviously that lens is designed to give you the sharpest images possible as long as the user gets the shutter speed correct and everything like that um, where the Sony RX10 is a bridge camera with as many manual controls as they can fit into it at the highest quality possible that they can fit in it you know the lens quality and everything for the size. It's you know it's an incredible piece of kit. Um, you know it's a one inch sensor compared to the the full frame 36 millimeter um, sensor. So big big difference in 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 sensor quality I think and and you know so maybe that's why the color. I mean I think the Sony and the Canon differences in colors are just down to the manufacturers. Um, I know you can download profiles so if you've got a Canon and you're using Sony as well you can actually download the the profile so basically you can get the colors to pretty much match um, straight out of the box um, 
where obviously I'm a Sony user, so I'm kind of used to what I, I see. Um, but like I said, it's, unless you see, you know, if I was to take this shot here, or Gav was to take this shot here, and I wasn't there, and he, you know, or vice versa, who's going to know what's what? So you know what is right and what is wrong. Um, yeah, it's like you know if we've got a film camera out and we took it with 35 millimeter film, what's the difference going to be then? It's going to be different. Um, you know it may, may look similar, but um, who knows? Um, but I just thought it's a very interesting test that we've done. That's kind of compared some everyday shots that you might do. You know, well, obviously the statue shots, not really, but you know the, the wildlife. That's what that big lens is for. You know, it's wildlife and and, and other things like that. And that the, the one DX. Mark II is obviously a wildlife high high frame rate camera, um, which is the same as the um, the Sony RX10 Mark IV. It's it's designed to give you the options to be able to do some wildlife shots or, or moving moving subjects as such. It will just lock on to whatever it can focus onto. It's absolutely incredible. Um, I was very impressed. I've never used a, 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 some of the Canon or high end Canon stuff really, um, so that was quite nice to just have a, a quick play with the 1DX Mark II. Um, learned a little bit from that. It was a bloody machine gun though. It was it is literally a machine gun that thing. Um you know, it felt like a machine gun the size of it. The um I was very impressed to see that the Sony A seven R two perform well on that lens actually. The the way it focused, the speed it focused, um both Gav and I were quite impressed with that. because um, it literally just went zoop straight on. We were like, okay, that's the fact that's an adapted camera using the Sigma MC11 adapter, um, so you know it worked. It, well, it just worked really, really well. Um, we didn't try anything else, um, so it may, it may be a fact that anything that's sat still, it might focus on very quickly. Anything moving, it may struggle a little bit. But who knows? Um, I'm not likely to use it. Not likely to use it again because obviously it's not my lens. Um, but at least we know that works. Um, I've also tried with the MC11. Um, friend Ben who's got a Canon uh, was it the 70 to 200 f4 lens that worked flawlessly that was that was brilliant on that very fast it's using all the focus points so 399 focus points across the, the sensor on the um, on that um, but yeah back to the the RX10 Mark IV it's kind of proved its worth um, very usable camera for the size and it almost fits in your pocket in some respects um, you know, but you know, a small bag. You can pick that up. It weighs a kilo, so it's, it's nothing. You, know, you can put it over your shoulder, and you wouldn't even know it's there. Um, you know, you can walk around there all day, anywhere. You know, travel with it, um, days out, stuff like that. It's just perfect. You just pick it up and go. So you've always got a very good camera with you. You know, it's a case of at my my experience level and, and my knowledge. You want something that you can adjust and get as much out of it as possible where the compacts and the lower lower end bridge cameras you really struggle to get the quality you want out of the images so um, well out of the camera rather sorry so it's a case of yes you have to spend more but Sony have kind of with a couple of compromises and a couple of little niggly bits that I think I'll just get used to because the more I use it um, it's something I, I've used every day for the last two weeks really um, where the Sony A7R2, you decide. I think I'll take a, a 70 to 200 with me today, or the 150 to 600 with me today. And do I take a tripod with me, or you know, what other lenses do I need? Um, you know, so it's a case of fill your bag up and carry five or six, seven, eight kilos around with you, or one kilo, and still get the shots. In fact, with the RX10, because you've got that 24 to 600, you can, there's a couple of shots I've already got this week that. I would normally have to put my bag down carefully, unzip it very quietly. There's a there's a piece of what a wildlife, um, like a bird or some wildlife bird or or a badger or a squirrel or something like that, that that could be sat not far away from me, and I'm sort of very slowly trying to get the camera lens changed onto the telephoto or whatever, um, without without the animal buggering off, and it, it quite often just as you get it in, click, and they look at you and go bye bye, and off they go, but. With the RX10, it's a case of turn it on, zoom in, pretty much got it. Um, yes, sometimes they move off a bit quick, and you have to 
try again but at least it's given me the chance to actually it's given you a higher chance to actually get the shots you you can get you know just on the off chance you know how many times have you walked your dog or or just gone to the park or just gone down the seafront um you know something like that and something's happened that you think ah oh, i've only got my mobile phone camera or my slr's in my pack you know my dslr's in my in my in the boot of the car or my on my back you know you can have this thing out ready it turns on very quickly it zooms into 600 millimeters pretty quickly obviously lightning fast um, AF for autofocus so it just works um, so the shots I've got from it recently are you know it's just incredible it is um, and just getting used to the fact that you have to think of it so trying to shoot low ISO really does help because it is a small sensor so it does suffer from the noise so anything really above a thousand ISO you want to be a little bit concerned about uh, in the real world so I've been shooting ISO 64, ISO 100, ISO 200 and it's absolutely fine absolutely fine um, shooting at night time do some star trails and everything on bulb um, absolutely fine I did a 15 minute I think 14 or 15 minute exposure and it was so clean really really good so shooting at wide angles 24mm f2.4 um, it's brilliant yeah really usable so you can take this out and actually do some long exposures and actually you know get some really good shots from it uh, so that was quite a nice surprise um, it doesn't have a macro function but I have realized that actually it focuses very very close at 24 millimeters so wide angle you can get very close to like flowers and, and things like that but also it focuses closer at 600 millimeters down to 0.92 of a, 0.92 of a meter um, so actually for doing close up stuff say things like butterflies and, and things like that in, in flowers you know if they're on the flowers or flying around at 600 millimeters actually going to get a very good shot of a butterfly um, with probably because of the depth of field um, isn't as shallow as like the bigger lenses you know they're four lenses and obviously a macro lens um, it's it's going to give you hopefully some actually some nice nice bokeh in the background but actually get most of it in focus that you actually want um, enough t amount of times I've actually done some macro photography and you're like shooting f16, f18, trying to get a, that bit more in focus. So I think actually, even though it's f4, and obviously they're like we're talking about the smaller sensor, it's actually a little bit beneficial actually in some respects. This is uh, it was one other shot actually quickly um, was this one here. So it was a stationary image. So both the same settings. So that was. Um, slightly two different slightly angles so slightly slightly two different slight angles um, so this is RX10 so I'm gonna go 100% here and that is extremely sharp this is when the Phantom had just landed so I just said to Gav quickly put it back down to ISO 100 um, it's in the shade the Sun was you know not really there um, and then you've got the Canon version which looks like this. So the depth of field obviously straight away you can see is very shallow. But when you go into this, let's compare. Side by side. In fact, I would say noticeably the uh, the Sony is, is, is sharper but also you can see the depth of field difference between the camera if I go to there let's go up a bit where you can see the, the depth of field diff drops off very very quickly with the Canon with that massive f4 lens and the, the, the full frame sensor you can see the difference straight away where on this one here Phantom itself is very sharp this is sharp DJI about the same actually but it's starting to soften off here but not a lot um, what I say there is I've come to the sort of conclusion is the lens both lenses are extremely sharp but because the RX10 the sensor is smaller 
your depth of field is obviously greater, uh, so it's uh, wider. Um, you've got a little bit more leeway of actually getting a sharper shot. Where the cannon, the depth of field is so shallow, especially at quite a, quite a close range, that you are going to miss it occasionally, and and you are the shots that you know you're going to get may be slightly out. I think that's a that's something to sort of consider. Um, I'm just looking at this grass here actually. So looking at the sharpness of the grass, you can see actually the depth of field difference there. So up front, you can see it's a slight slightly different. And then it's nice and sharp, drops off very, very quickly, but we're still in focus here. I mean, the depth of field back here is still greater than here. It's crazy. Um, so I think there is a difference between sharpness due to the size size of the sensor. Um, it just gives you a little bit more leeway of getting it right. But when you actually stand back and look at these, anyway, I'll get it over that way. Um, you know, you, there's hardly anything in it in real terms. Would you really notice? Would you really notice the difference? Not really. I think you know. Right, guys. So that's another video done. It's. I hope that's kind of helped a few people. I don't know. It was like a comparison, really. It was just a bit of fun. Um, Gather's quite intrigued about the RX10 Mark IV. Um, I love the thing. It's absolutely it's changed my daily photography, shall I say? Um, it allows me to just pick the thing up, turn it on, go and photograph what I want very easily. Um, you've got the control that you want from, say, the A7R2 or the or, or the Canon. Um, you know, you've got the full the full Monty, should we say? Um, with some stuff that even the, the DSLRs can't even do or even the, the Sony A7R2 or even the A3 or the A9 A7R3 or the A9 can't do um, you know so the fact that I've got one thirty-two thousandth of a second shutter speed if I want it and fully completely silent shutter um, thousand frames a second a slow motion video the stupid fast tracking autofocus that's just ridiculous and 24 frames a second bursts for about 11 seconds or thereabouts, 11 12 seconds. Um, so 248 to 250 shots in around about 10 seconds or so, um, while still auto focusing at the same time. It's a game changer for me. Um, it's allowed me to get some wildlife shots when I've been out wandering without having to change lenses, and, you know, things like that. So it's just, just handy to have. You can pick it up, take a small bag with you, and uh, off you go. And it's sort of transform the way I have to think about photography yes I'm going to go and do a job um, some advertising whatever I'd use the, the other cameras um, obviously the lenses and everything you need for a particular job the lighting and everything like that but you can still do portraiture and the um, you know add lighting and everything to the RX10 Mark IV it's got eye focus so I can do portraiture and it locks onto the faces it will lock onto the eyes it will track the eyes of people um, so you get some seriously good sharp images um, I'm yet to actually do a proper shoot and compare the images, it could be quite interesting um, I'll show you the difference between the A7R2 or if I can get an A7R3 um, to use for the day um, so anyway that's, an, that's another test done and um, another video so please subscribe and uh, like the images and also click the little um, the bell thing that obviously notifies you when another video goes up and uh, you know anyway so hopefully that may have helped a few people um, I know it's opened the eyes opened the eyes of uh, opened the eyes to Gav um, he was just intrigued to try it out and see what he thought um, so yeah um, my dad's ordered one so he's he's it allows him to just pick up the camera up and go and enjoy photography again properly um, a bit more um, it's just the ease of use I think it's just that's the benefit of it um, but yeah so anyway um, chat soon guys